Hey, it's funny how numbers work. Amid the existential dread existing around this country's current fiscal situation, it's at least somewhat amusing and even relieving to realize that the percentage rise of inflation in the United States may well be inversely proportional to the drop in sleepy Joe Biden's poll numbers. Now, this would be a nice thing to think about at the gas pump. I'm having to surgically remove an arm and a leg just to get across town, but at least the likelihood of this drooling dipshit and his coterie of dastardly doofuses getting back into office is getting less and less all the time. Folks, inflation isn't just here, it's growing. If you've been paying attention at all to the news, by which I mean the real news, not CNN or MSNBC, then you've seen the numbers and they're not good. Last month, inflation jumped to its highest level in nearly 40 years. It's been higher than 5% now for over six solid months, and it keeps rising. Now, if that number doesn't scare you, it's because you haven't yet realized that inflation is running far too quickly for the market to be able to catch up. Gas prices in November alone shot up over 58%, and you can't tell me that you don't feel that. And what does our illustrious commander-in-chief have to say about it? Why, it's COVID's fault. Of course it is. Supply chain disruptions, labor shortages, you name it. The Biden administration will throw anything and everything out in front of that charging bus except the phrase, we screwed the pooch. The level of cognitive dissonance to which these people not only stoop, but expect you to stoop is frankly astonishing. I want you to remember something. (coughs) Last year, after the COVID pandemic came along and flattened the economy, the Trump administration was well on its way to rebuilding the best economy of our lifetime again. That's what deregulation and keeping the government out of the economy's way will do for you. This was something that Trump understood and Biden does not. For the, f- for the few hours every day that Biden's got enough drugs in him to be conscious, his worldview of things like the economy is pretty plainly that it is the, the thing best managed by government. But anyone of you who's been alive for more than five minutes and has ever made more than a couple of financial transactions knows that's nonsense. Hell, Biden's made plenty of financial transactions outside of the loving arms of the American government. He ought to know better. Folks, the transformative element in American politics in the rare instances when it has transformed has always been an awakening from within the collective consciousness of its citizens. Now, if you've heard me talk about it once, you've heard me talk about it a thousand times. Never forget the government exists for one primary reason to protect your rights. It's not there to supply your rights, and it's not there to control the way that you or the whole economy do business. It's wormed its way into those things because that is the nature of governments. Imagine a cart full of bad apples with a few good ones rolling around in it. That's what government looks like. The people in the media who carry all the water for these psychopaths want you to believe that they know what they're doing and that they have your best interests at heart. Don't buy that narrative, people. We've got to get Biden and those who think like him. I'm not sure anybody thinks like Joe Biden, but you take my meaning. You understand what I'm saying. We've got to get these crazy people out of office and put in people who have a truer understanding of the American way of doing things. But it goes beyond that. That understanding has to take better root in our own minds and hearts because elected officials come and go. Some of them a lot more slowly than we'd want, but they do. Underlying principles never disappear unless we let them. And we do that by getting lazy, by setting our principles to the side whenever it gets hard to do anything about them. Let's get back to thinking about these things critically and acting upon them in our lives. And then maybe, just maybe, we can turn this ship around before the rest of it scrapes along the iceberg and we all have to just sit on the deck listening to the string quartet play us out as we sink to the bottom.